Hi guys, it's Sherry. Today I am going to be showing you a different type of bracelet and I love this bracelet and I really was playing around and trying to figure out the exact technique to show you guys and do a video on it. So the first thing that you're going to need is your Primo clay and make sure it's a clay that is flexible after you bake it. So do Primo clay, which is what I would do and um, roll it out to your thickest setting. If you do not have a pasta machine, this is about the thickness you are going to want. And I'm going to stamp my front and back together at the same time. And I'm going to do some, um, this is like some kind of little poem. So I'm going to put that on the inside. And then I have this beautiful stamp that I'm going to use for the top. And I am just going to lay these on top of each other. And then very carefully, I will just push down onto this to make sure it doesn't move and it gets a good impression. Once I get it into place, I'll use my rolling pin. But this kind of helps secure it all together and make sure it's not going to move on me. And then I'll just take my rolling pin and get a nice impression on it. Now I'm not pressing overly too hard, but I have a good um, amount of weight on there as well. And I just love this stamp. So now you'll have the words on the back side and look how beautiful the front is gonna be. So the next thing I did was I made a stencil here and basically you're gonna, you know, cut a, kind of draw out like an oval and then you're gonna make slits and make sure that this part sticks out wider than that part. And I'm hoping that makes sense for you guys. But this was the easiest way for me to do it. So I'm gonna lay this down and then let's see here. I'm just gonna trace it out. And then right here are my slits. So I just wanna kinda of hold that paper in place and make sure I'm following that the right way. Okay, so I really hope you can see how I did that stencil. So I'll hold it here for like a minute so you could kind of just get a general idea of how you have to draw this stencil out. Now I have my bangle here. I'm just going to kind of clean it up a bit. Let's wipe off all the old clay. And my wrist is small, so I am going to stop actually above the end point because every time I do one of these, it's still a little big on my wrist and I like my bangles to, or my cuffs to be tight. I don't want them to be that open. And when you add your, um, your lobster claw clasps or your jump rings, it stays that big. It just secures it shut. So I want mine more like that. So I'm just gonna make my clay a little bit smaller and that should help. So I'm gonna take my pieces and very carefully, well, wait, hold on, before I do that, I wanna make sure I have my middle. So I just eye this up is all I do. And I'm gonna poke a little mark right where my middle is gonna be. So this way I know where to lay that on my cuff. And it is going to come out over a cuff because it's going to be a bigger piece. So find your middle. Make sure that it's laying on there right. And then I am going to take this and move it in the middle. So now my cuff, the main part will be centered in the middle. So take that, put that in the middle, and 
where's my knife? Right here's my knife. I'm going to cut it where I want it to stop. Make sure everything's straight. Do the same thing and just eye it up if you're making it shorter to kind of see if they're about the same width. So I want that a little bit. Okay. This is probably the longest part that you're going to spend the, your time on just making sure these little pieces kind of line up straight. And you can see this part is wider than this one. So I am actually just going to kind of trim that up a bit because I don't want them to be that uneven. So I'm just going to kind of trim that up just a little bit. And do the same thing here. So on this, you're just basically kind of eyeing it all up right now. And that's about where I want it. Let me just clean that up a little. Okay, so I am going to smooth these sides out, make sure they're kind of rounded a bit because I want them to lay nicely. I don't want them to be flat and very boxy looking. Okay, now I have my faux stone that I made. I actually made it tutorial showing you how I made this stone so I can link that in the video if you're interested in seeing it and I am going to kind of just play around and see how I would like to wrap this around so I want a lot of that stone to show so I want to kind of play around and see what stone is going to work best for this. And I think that right there is the best way of putting this. So I am going to get my clay adhesive. And I'm going to lay it right in the middle. Let's rub it on there. And then I will place my stone on there. And then the one that you are going to be tucking underneath, pull it slightly and then wrap it around and go down, okay? So you're gonna kind of just wrap this right around your stone. And then you will cut that little section off because we don't want that extra clay underneath the bracelet. So just cut that off. And then I like to kind of just press it down. And then you take this one and pull it. And I'm actually gonna put a little bit of glue or adhesive right here, make sure. I'm gonna put some right here as well and then I'll tuck it in there. So I'll get my um, blending tool and I'm just gonna tuck that glue right under and press down so this way I know my clay will stay on there very nicely and secure my faux stone in there. 
This Jasper is going to look so pretty on here. So then take that and then you're going to go down and I like to take this and kind of turn it. So I'm giving it like a little wing. So I want pretty much of the stone to show if possible. So I'm just going to kind of pull this down just a little bit so I'm happy with how much. I don't want all of it to show because it's almost like a little peekaboo. And that is what it will look like. Next, I am going to do some mica powder. So I have a brown, green, and then I have a gold. This stamp is actually from um, the Crayon kit. So if you're interested in that stamp, this mica powder and a number of other things come with it. And I can put that in my description box for you as well if you're interested. So I'm going to start with my gold because that's my lighter color. And then I'm just going to kind of go over and I'm not going to get the whole thing gold. I just want to kind of do bits and pieces because I want to do like a blend with my um, brown and the gold together. I'm going to take a little brown and I love this because you'll see little hints of green in this brown and it looks, it just looks really cool when you do like a nice blend. Okay. And that's what we have so far. And what I like to do last before I put it in the oven, oops, is I really wanna bring out the details into this imprint because it's just so beautiful. I hate not to. I wanna make sure I didn't get that area. Okay, so I have my rub on metallic paint and now I just got to kind of decide which ones I want to put on and I'm thinking maybe like the, I'm thinking maybe this, this might look good. So I'm going to take a piece of clay here and I just want to see how dark that is going to be. But I'm thinking this one will make it pop. So let's try that. This is more, it's almost like a, um, a mauve. So I'm just going to kind of very nicely and carefully just go over because I just want the details of that um, stamp to be brought out and be able to really see it. Oops. That looks so pretty. You can really see all the beautiful details now. I want to get up closer to these pieces that my finger cannot get to. Oh, this is going to be so pretty. I'm super happy with this. So that 
is what we have. I think that looks super neat. So on the edges, you can see a little bit of the green and then gold and then the bronzy. And you can see all the detail in that. So very, very beautiful. I'm very happy with this. So now I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 for a full, I'm going to say half hour will be perfectly fine. And then we'll come back and we'll finish this piece up. All right, my piece is out of the oven. I love it. Um, I did do something a little bit, I, I added a little bit more when it first came out of the oven. I thought it needed a little bit more color, so I added my blue, and I think that helped a lot. But as I'm getting closer and looking at um, the colors next to the stone, they kind of blend together, so you really can't see the stone as well as I was hoping. So, I am actually going to add some gold paint. And I think that is going to kind of break it up a little bit. So, I am just going to, let me get a paintbrush, that'll be better. So, I'm just going to add a little gold paint right to the edge here. And I think that's going to help break it up a little bit because the dark color near the dark stone really kind of is not helping. So just adding it on the inner part. And that shouldn't take too long to dry. There's my towel. And I'm just going to take my brush. I got it a little wet. And I'm just going to carefully just kind of Go over that and make sure no gold paint is on the stone part. So I'll let that dry and then I'm going to put some resin only on the stone. So when I'm done with that, then we will um, go to the next step. All right, guys, there it is. And I love the way that this, the faux stone looks, this jasper, but I almost feel like my bracelet is blended in a little too much. So I decided I'm gonna add a little silver. As much as I really want to keep this more bronze and copper and gold, I think the silver is what is gonna make it kind of um, pop a little bit. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on my hands and then I'm just going to kind of go over and just add a little bit and hopefully that'll break up the colors that we have going on and it won't be so strong that it basically is blending the stone too much. So I figured just adding a little silver with the rest of the colors would look nice. And I already feel like that's kind of helping it. So I'm just lightly going over the top parts a little bit and not all of it, just a little bit here and a little bit there, just to give it a little bit extra. And I think that's going to help. Okay, so I'm actually going to pop this off. Just carefully take your piece off. And then you can see the inside and how nice that looks. So I am going to paint the inside as well. And that, I think, I'm going to do some copper and then maybe a little silver over on top once it dries. So this way the words will be filled with the copper and then the silver will go over that. Or maybe I should do it the opposite way. Yeah, let's do it the opposite way. So I'm going to do the silver first so it goes inside all the little words. 
and then I will brush copper over that. And that way, the silver that's on top will kind of be all incorporated. So I'm just gonna kind of really push that into those um, indents so I know that my silver is getting inside all those little letters. And my top is already dry. So while the inside is drying, I am going to put my satin glaze on the top and get that ready. So I'm just gonna go over my piece and this will put a beautiful shine on it. And then it'll also protect your mica powder and your paints. This bracelet is gonna be so perfect for fall time. And I have the perfect dress that will go with this. Okay, so I'll let that completely dry inside and out. And then once it's dry, I will do a small coat of, it's still a little wet. I'll do a small coat of the copper and then we'll glaze that as well. And then I'll show you how to put the end pieces on. My piece is completely dried now, and look how beautiful. The inside looks fantastic. The outside, I really like. I'm glad I added that silver, because I really think that helped with bringing out the stones. So the last thing we need to do is get our two little clamps, and I picked the largest ones that I have, and I am just gonna place them on here, and then you just squeeze them, and then take your pliers, and completely clamp those on. So just squeeze, and I'd like to get the ends first. Push down as far as you can, and then squeeze, and then get into the middle. And I think that helps um, put everything on very nice and even. So that is not coming off. I'm pulling that pretty hard. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Make sure we have it centered. And I get my ends. And there, that is on there very, very nice. I have my jump rings and I'm using um, about that size. So I say maybe a six millimeter. And then I'm gonna close this. And the nice thing is if you want it larger, you just add extra jump rings. And then I will put my clasp on. And then I will just kind of place this on and see if I need to add more jump rings or not. And I'm gonna add one more jump ring. Close that one as well. And then that should fit perfect. And if you want it larger, you can just keep adding jump rings. Oops, come on. So if you want it a little bit looser and not really tight, you add another one. So now this way, I have a little bit of extra length to it. 
and it won't be so skin tight on me, if that makes sense. But there it is. Look how beautiful. I think this came out really neat. I love this style. I like the wrap around style. And then this texture sheet really is perfect for bracelets for how long it is. I absolutely love the long texture sheets. I really hope you guys enjoy creating this piece with me. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you all again next time. Bye.